The American-built M4 Sherman tank has almost as complex a history as it does a naming scheme. With so many variants built, it can truly be eye-watering. While other American tanks like the M3 Lee have infinitely more meme potential on the surface, it's been fascinating to watch the legend of the Sherman grow in the fashion that it has. Even in the late 1930s, the Sherman was always the tank the United States had in mind to fight the war overseas, and they took their sweet time ensuring they got everything right, with the M3 Lee literally being a stopgap vehicle because the United States didn't want to throw their precious Sherman onto the battlefield before they knew it was ready. Of course, this is typically omitted from online tank discussion forums for the fact that the United States simply ended up producing so many of the things. The Sherman has become the butt of almost every joke involving quantity over quality, with Wearaboos and Sherman haters taking this aspect to the extreme to prove their point. This is something I personally find quite hilarious, considering Soviet production of T-34s eventually ended up surpassing that of the United States. In fact, German generals on the Eastern Front were quite famous for remarking that for every T-34 they knocked out, four more came right after it. Something the average tanker seems to forget is that there is no definition for a cheap tank. Cheap means different things for different nations, in different economic states, and at different times. At the end of the day, everyone is just trying to produce the best tank for their needs. Some nations can afford to incorporate more features into their tanks, but it doesn't inherently make them better or more capable. Would the Sherman be the best tank for the Germans? No, because the Sherman relies on a massive logistical network of spare parts that are reused on a plethora of other American vehicles, tanks included. So to make the Sherman work for Germany, you immediately have to give them good logistics, and that's not happening, and erase pretty much every tank they've drawn up since 1936. Would the Sherman be the best tank for the British? This seems an obvious answer, since Britain was the second largest user of the Sherman in reality. However, I would again argue no. After Dunkirk, the British were not exactly in a position to be manufacturing Shermans in the tens of thousands, let alone shipping them to North Africa while fighting off the Luftwaffe on their own front door. The reason Shermans worked so well for Britain in reality is because they had America to give them tens of thousands of Shermans and the logistics to support them. Finally, what about Russia? They also seem an obvious candidate. They needed cheap tanks en masse, they needed one tank that could do most tasks, and they needed something fast, tough, and reliable. Not to mention, the Soviets also were already using the Sherman. Once again though, the answer is no. To put it bluntly, the Sherman is too expensive. This is what I mean by cheap being different to different nations. The T-34 should have been produced to true blueprint specifications would cost just about as much as a Sherman. So if the Soviets purposely handicapped T-34 production to make them cheaper, they probably would have done the exact same for the Sherman. Perhaps it would have given them a more solid base to work off of. However, it would not be the same tank. What the Sherman had that almost no other tank did was accountability. When you needed a tank to push a fortified position, you knew you could get your hands on a Sherman within a reasonable window of time, and the tank would perform as advertised to get the job done. And this was only possible with American logistics. I'm always baffled when I hear talk that the Sherman was only good in mass numbers. Yeah, that's the point. American manufacturing and doctrine suited the Sherman perfectly. It was too cheap for Germany, it was too expensive for Russia, and it was too complex for the British. But for the Americans, it was just right. In summary, the Sherman teaches us that there is still quality to be found in quantity, and what each individual can define as the best tank for their purposes isn't really a matter of debate especially when it's being debated almost 80 years later by a bunch of historians who weren't even there. You don't necessarily need to be the best at anything to be the best at everything. What tank would you like me to give a lesson in next? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, thanks you for watching. Ah, <sighs> this is getting old.